Hey y'all, happy Saturday. I hope y'all are enjoying your weekend so far. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, I'm Carolyn and I'm glad you've decided to hang with us today. Y'all know I usually post cleaning videos, but I've had a couple of requests to show my she shed. So we're going to tour my, sh tour my she shed today. If I can talk first. <laughs> first, I need to get dinner going in the crock pot. So, we are having homemade French dips. Um, if you don't know what those are, you can get those from Arby's. Um, I will have the recipe linked down in the description below. I got it off of Pinterest. If you want to try this yourself. So, I start the dish by putting a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in a pan and turning that on medium heat. While that heats up, I chop up an onion and a, and a half. Set that to the side. Then I sear a boneless London broil in the olive oil on all sides. Once it's seared, I place the meat in the crock pot to rest while you saute the onions. While the onions cook, go ahead and add a cream of French onion soup to the crock pot. Also add in some Worcestershire sauce. I know I slaughtered that. Don't come at me. Some soy sauce and some minced garlic. When the onions are done, add those to the crock pot as well. Return your pan back to the stove and put it on high. Once you've done that, pour a can of beef consomme. Listen, I'm going to slaughter these words. Don't come at me. Pour that beef stuff into the pan along with some of those beef bouillon paste or the cubes if you don't have the paste, which I didn't have it, so I used the cubes. And then let that come to a boil. Scrape the bits and pieces off the bottom of the pan and then pour it into the crock pot. Um, I cooked mine on low for about seven or eight hours, I think. So, yeah, it was really, really good. You can use chuck roast if you have it. I didn't have it, so I had London broil, so that's what I used. Um, but, yeah, once I've got dinner in started in the crock pot, I'm going to clean my mess up and then we're going to head out to the building. We say we love, we say we love
Okay, so y'all are going to have to learn, or you're going to learn, that I am very awkward. So, yeah. You're just going to have to deal with it. I have gotten a request to have a tour of my she shed. My, I call it my building, because that's what it is. It's an outbuilding in the back of my yard. Um, the noise in the background you hear is the AC. So, um, I really don't like being in front of the camera like this, like speaking directly to you. I like to do voiceovers and stuff because I don't like to be put on point, put, put on the spot. There you go. Um, so, yeah. But I think this is the easiest way for me to explain everything that's in here, what I do, and what everything does, and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. I had a sneeze. <coughs> yeah. Th that was yummy. Um, so yeah, let's get started with this tour. <laughs> so I can stop being weird. Okay, I'm at the door. This is where you walk in. Got my dogs out. <laughs> um, this is not a palace, but it works for me. So, I will start with this cabinet right here. This cabinet um, used to be a TV thing, a entertainment center. There you go. And uh, my husband, we, okay, we were both on the lookout for a cabinet that was four feet wide and two feet deep so I could fit my six cup turner in there and uh, so he actually was on a lookout and he ran across this thrift store that was actually going out of business and he found this entertainment center and they were like hey you know we're going out of business you can have this so my, my husband actually paid someone like five dollars to help him get it on his truck and he brought it home and it worked out perfect. I had plenty of room in there for that. And uh, all we did was we had to buy a piece of board, like this piece of board. I don't know what it's called, uh, but we put it on the back to close this off. And uh, we, uh, um, we closed it off. I bought a, this mat right here is like for plants and stuff. And, uh, sorry, my nose is kind of funny, but, um, what was I saying? This mat, <laughs> this mat is a, it's a grow mat. There you go. It's a grow mat, but it works perfectly in here to keep the heat regulated because I work with epoxy resin and it has to be a certain temperature before it can cure correctly and all that good stuff. So up there is i'll get in there in a minute but up there is a humidifier a dehumidifier um turn that on because it has to be perfect humidity so it cures correctly and a lot of science goes into it that i don't understand just the basics <laughs> um so yeah so we have a local glass company that actually made the doors um this is plex sand I think I'm saying it right we I say we but it's my husband my husband screwed in the magnets up top and down bottom and he also screwed some uh, knobs in there and yeah made our own little cabinet doors so I can see what's going on in there and everything and I can shut it and not have the epoxy fumes out here where I'm breathing um, we had this little light. I'm not sure where we got it from, but we had this little fluorescent light on hand. We just put some screws in here, hung that up. This is a, an exhaust fan that my husband found somewhere and he cut a hole up here, put that in so that it can suck the exhaust out or suck the, um, fumes out. So let me move this out of the way that's it right there and we have it funneled out the window I'm not gonna pull that back but um yeah so these things up here these are they look like flowers but they hook on to the cup chucks that's what that is 
and different sizes fit in different cups. Um, when I first started doing this, I started in 2019 and I started in my kitchen. So I started with these footballs and some PVC pipe, which is back there and a rotisserie turner. My husband actually made me a cup turner out of a rotisserie turner. And I only had like two or three turners in my kitchen. And over time I eventually just graduated. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the fart fan or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so this is a six cup turner. And I have, these are called chucks. These things right here are called cup chucks. And they fit inside of these cups. Like that. And it's a tight fit. So, the cups can easily be put on one of these arms. Tighten it up and the switches are underneath and they can turn so I can work on it as it turns this right here is a pin chuck I work on pins they hold eight at a time I ordered this turner and all these cup chucks from the Bowen company on Etsy they are the best and I'm pretty sure this is their biggest turner. They do offer smaller ones. This is a little thermometer. Um, the temperature and the humidity. <clears throat> a thermometer for the heating mat. I had my husband put me a little shelf up here so I can put the dehumidifier up here. And these are molds. Silicone molds. These are for... Um... um what are they called? Coasters. And then I have some that are keychains. And then a llama keychain. That epoxy is bad. Um, I didn't like it, so I didn't use it all. That's why it looks yellow like that. I need to throw it away. Um, yeah, that's the inside of that. Okay. And I'll finish going through up, upstairs <laughs> up here okay so these are faux ice cream scoots that I made with um, spackling to sit on top of the cups or the lids let me show you like that sit on top like that These are tumblers. These are 40 ounce tumblers, plain tumblers. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff in here. I don't want to pull it out, to be honest. If we go down here to the drawers, these are my props to take photos of my product. These are some extra chucks that I've made with uh, pool noodles and extra chuck arms. It's over here. These are extra, these are our turners that I actually bought after the uh, rotisserie turners were made. I bought extra single turners, so I had extra turners and these are this is a big pool noodle that I cut down um, and then the PVC pipe I bought these three turners off of Amazon and then this is extra supplies I have uh, wool pads so I can sand down some things mat the epoxy down some measuring cups and some extra seasoning bottles 
for spices and stuff, but I use them for glitter. And that is the epoxy cabinet. All right. When I first, I will try to find a, a video when I first got this building fixed up. This is the building when we first bought it and we didn't have much in here. So we came a long way. We got this building, it was a repo building. And so we got it for a good price and there was nothing in it. The only thing that was in it was the light that was up there. It was just a single light bulb and we took it out and I replaced it with that ceiling fan so yeah that was the only thing that was in here this green insulation stuff wasn't in here um, these extra lights we put in they weren't here all of the outlets we put in they weren't here the only thing that was here was that outlet that ran up to that light so we put in everything that you see um, that is the door. I put a curtain there um, to try to help keep the air in, but I got tired of fooling with that curtain, so I just clipped it back. Um, also, this table right here used to be one piece all the way across. And uh, yeah, over time, you know, you just, you do what you can to make it comfortable for you, what works for you. So we cut that table so we could fit that cabinet in there i put or my husband my husband did most of this i put um shelves up here my husband put shelves up here so i could store my extra cups these are 20 ounce skinnies 20 ounce curves 30 curve 30 skinnies these are 20 skinny sublimation and then this section right here has a couple of different sizes. Those right there are spray bottles that look like this. That's what those look like. I made that. Um, gloves, uh, natural gloves to work with epoxy. This is the type of epoxy that I use. I order it off of Amazon. It's a pretty decent price um, these are cups that I started working on that I haven't finished so before I've got that turner um, I was working with those single turners and the rotisserie turner um, these were my cup chucks and I had my husband make me a place where I could set them while they were drying after spray painting or set them after the epoxy was very tacky so i didn't have to leave them on the turner and i could just keep going um these are some cups that i'm working on or started to work on and never finished um these cups are all trash they all need to be stripped um, i have to put them in some acetone and strip all the stuff off of that this is acetone this is what gets epoxy off of everything. Um, this is a cup that I made. This is a 30 ounce curve. So I make cups. I work on tumblers. I work on pens. Um, I work on sublimation cups. I do t-shirts, sublimation t-shirts or heat transfer vinyl. All that good stuff this is a heat gun that I use to heat up the epoxy to get the bubbles out <clears throat> excuse me and then down here are some tie-dye stuff we actually found this dresser at a yard sale or not a yard sale a flea market HTV vinyl and then HTV vinyl scraps and under here, well, I'm making a mess. These are curtains that we just hung up here so I could cover all my mess down here. So under here is more storage. There's actually stuff in there that does not pertain to 
my cups but these are bullet tumblers they're like a thermos type thing but they're shaped like a bullet if I can get it out hold on I'll see if I can post some of the cups that I've done over the years but that's actually a tumbler looks like a bullet you can see me you just screw this top off and then the top looks like a a thermos So that's what's down there. I'll put that I'll put that back in a minute when I'm done. Okay, so this is my heat press. I also have a press that connects for mugs and tumblers and stuff that connects to this. Um, this is a cup that I did for Christmas. This is a cup I did for Halloween. I don't have an Etsy shop or anything like that. I just make them when I feel creative. This is my glitter wall. Anybody that comes in here loves this wall. And they're like, oh my gosh, glitter! <laughs> I order almost all of my glitter from the Glitter Chimp. To me they have the best glitter if I'm in a pinch and need it in a hurry I go to Michaels or wherever carries what I'm looking for and then I have this shelf right here um, this is all permanent as permanent or removable vinyl this is for the cups this is not for shirts or anything and then I have my paints my micas and my alcohol inks and then try to get over here so these are all alcohol inks i'm gonna sit in my chair um i have spray paints and here i have receipts this is a calendar that i'm working on Um, and here is sanding and things like that. And here is rubbing alcohol to clean the cups to get all the oils off of it. Spackling, Mod Podge. And here are more molds, packing tape, extra glitter. It'd be help if it would help if you could see, huh? Rings for the keychains. Key I have more spray paint down there, clear spray, and then here is um, paint supplies like paint brushes, foam brushes, things like that. Okay. And then up here I have my little bulletin board. That's my youngest daughter when she was a baby. That's my oldest. No, that's my middle daughter. She was a baby. That's my oldest daughter when she was little. Cute. That's my mother-in-law. And that's my son. <laughs> Styling and profiling. Um, this is my tape, my painter's tape, everything like that. I just put it on a paper towel holder. Um, a little coffee area. Because coffee is life. <laughs> um, just some odd and end stuff. I actually do these for... A little girl um, around Christmas time 
also I put her name in the year um, this is like more scrapbooky stuff but there's other stuff in here like gold leaf tattoos rub on, rub on tattoos things like that I can put those on tumblers as well and this is extra vinyl um, tissue paper all this stuff under here is paint and storage stuff that goes to the house but we can't fit it in the house um, so this is my workstation this is the Cricut area this is my computer and then my two printers I have a printer to print off regular stuff um, water slides things like that and then this printer is a sublimation printer it was a regular printer and I transferred it into a sublimation printer and then my TV up there I like to watch Bailey Sarian while I'm working if y'all don't know who that is you gotta check her out she's awesome this is a cabinet that we found that I repainted and I put all of my t-shirts in And then my husband put on uh, this plywood so I could have this other shelf. These are extra mats for the Cricut. Extra stuff, extra stuff. Um, this is my Cricut Joy. It's cute, it's little. I can take it anywhere if I need to work on something while we're out or on vacation or something like that. And then in here, are canvases and things and then this right here is a mini press a Cricut mini press um, again it's easy it's small it, I can travel with it if I need to do something while we're on vacation okay so we go on around um, this desk right here I did have it turned up against this wall um, and then I had my printer sitting on this shelf right here I didn't like it I didn't like my back to the door um, I also knew I wanted to have these lights put up so I can have extra lighting and at one point I was really wanting to do YouTube videos of doing my cups and stuff um, so I knew I was gonna have to have some way to record it but I don't know I, I just couldn't really get into it because I wanted to come out here and be creative and have this as my outlet um, and I just didn't want to come out here and have to put on a show for people you know if you get it you get it you don't you don't you know what I'm saying <laughs> um, I have my trash can right here in this little area I do want to get in here one day and make this whole thing a piece like I don't want to have this disconnected like that um, I think it would just make more sense so um, but yeah this is my extra workstation I have some cups over here that I've been working on. This is a sublimation cup with epoxy over it. Um, same thing with this. I like to put a layer of epoxy over sublimation because sublimation, if scratched hard enough, can be scratched off. This is a cup that I made. Um, I actually carried this cup and there's a crack in the bottom same thing with this cup I made it I carried it and I dropped it and it's got a crack on the bottom somewhere this is what sublimation cups look like before you put the picture on it they have to have some kind of special coating this white coating so the picture can transfer onto it and then these are extra cup chucks and they tell you what size they are on them what cup that fit it fits um this is a this is my cup that I'm carrying right now but this is a 40 ounce um, 40 ounce what's it called curb there you go oh Lord compared to a skinny a 20 ounce so it's a really big cup I like it I keep lemon water in here <laughs> um, these are still this is another silicone mold um, I try not to waste my epoxy like this I try to mix it up with some glitter and it was already 
too hot and it was already curing so I waited too long on that but I usually mix my extra epoxy with some glitter put it in this mold when it's done I take it out and I put it on a badge reel like that and you can put I can put a initial on it or whatever and seal it in I have a bunch of different colors um and then this is the coaster mold I think I have like three or four of these this is what they look like they come out looking like of course you can do different colors this is a cup that I worked on because I was bored um these are cups that I'm working on well actually they're finished um I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna show you the whole entire thing I'm not gonna put the uh it's for a local restaurant I'm not gonna put that out there I'll cover the top maybe <laughs> like that but that's what it looks like on the front I put their logo they gave me permission and then it's like a patina vibe looking thing it's a Mexican restaurant their food is really good my husband knows the owner um, these are pins this is the pin chuck that hooks onto that thing over there um, these are two pins that I'm making for one of my daughter's friends these are ink joy gel pins that I use this is what they look like before I put anything on them um, yeah so going back over here in this drawer is regular printer paper cardstock paper um, clear paper um, for water slides um, I have some printable vi printable vinyl paper in here all that good stuff some extra ink and then down here are some more tools these are tools for my cups and stuff uh, scissors weeding tools um, all kind of stuff and actually this thing is a makeup brush holder I just use it for my tools um, I have fake fruit in here to put on top of my cup um, this is vase filler I actually use this on my cup toppers to look like ice pearls half pearls um, fake fruit that I can put on top of my cups and here I have blueberries cherries and orange slices here I have pineapple slices and lemon slices here I have fake pumpkins I have lime slices, strawberries, and watermelon slices, and then here is, I don't know what that is to be honest, flour, I think that's flour to make the paint thicker. Oh, the middle drawer right here is more supplies more tools my exacto knife pens pencils my measuring tape my scraper um some care cards um yeah scissors things like that over here are transfer tape here is extra more extra supplies um my my epoxy mask in there my respirator whatever you want to call it my stapler hole puncher dremel tool down here is extra paper um sometimes i wrap the cup in um what is this called uh cling wrap plastic wrap whatever to help the overspray so i don't get overspray on the rest of the cup um and then some wax paper to help with epoxy protection let's see over here 
This is actually a makeup bag that I turned into storage. I have puffy paint up there, some odd and end stuff in there, odd and end stuff, and markers. Actually, those are markers for my Cricut. Oh, this right here. This, I got this thing at uh, Michael's, and this is, I just wrote it on here what size it was. This is where I keep my straws for my cups, and I know what size it goes to. And then these are silicone things that go around the bottom so you don't scuff them up around the bottom of the cups. Again, Bailey Sarian, you can find her on YouTube if you're not familiar with her. She's awesome. All right. Thanks, past awkward Carolyn. We appreciate the tour. <laughs> if y'all have any questions, just ask. I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, let's get dinner finished up because we have some hungry youngins. So you just take the meat out and put it on a plate so you can shred it. Strain the juices so you can separate the onions from the juice. You'll have a bowl for the juice, a bowl for the onion mixture, and a bowl for the shredded meat. Once you have that done, take some French rolls, open them up, and slap some butter in there. Put them into a 350 degree oven for about two to three minutes to toast them. When they're toasted really good, pull them out of the oven and start putting the sandwich together. I put two slices of provolone cheese per roll. I top that with the meat and the onion mixture. I put it back in the oven to melt the cheese. And once the cheese is melted, the sandwich is ready to eat. So you put some of the juice in a bowl to dip your sandwich in. We like to have fries with this dish. So I air fried some French fries while in between of doing all this straining and shredding and stuff. And you're ready to eat. Uh, I did have an extra roll that didn't have any provolone cheese on it, which worked out perfectly because I have two kids that don't like provolone cheese. So I just cut the roll into two rolls and they were happy. There were two French dips and some juice left over. So I packed that up and walked it over to my in-laws. They only live two doors over, which is convenient. And uh, I visited with them a little bit, caught up on some things and uh, came back to the house to clean up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, put a purple heart down in the comments, and don't forget to share this with your mama them. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.
people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. The music is fading, but this is our favorite.